Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to do an example of how to calculate the transition, the stable transition matrix, if we're dealing with an absorbing Markov chain. And so here's the transition matrix we start with. We have the states A, B, and C we're coming from. Those are the two states, and notice that for the A state, we have a one here, so from A to A, 100% of the customers stay at A, none of the customers go to B or C. So how do we find the stable matrix? We already have an inkling that the stable matrix, if everything works out okay, should look like 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that the stable distribution matrix will look like this. So it'll be a 1 and 3 zeros for the A, the B, and the C state. So this would be what we call the stable transition matrix. All right, so let's see if we can find it using this technique. Well, first of all, what we need to do is realize that if we go ahead and divide that into the four regions right here, that this is our identity matrix, the zero matrix, the S matrix, and the R matrix. So the first thing we want to do is subtract the R matrix from the identity matrix. Since the R matrix is the two by two, we want to make the identity matrix a two by two as well. So that means that I minus R will become identity matrix, of course, ones across the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And we subtract from that the R matrix, which is 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5. So we get the matrix as follows. We have 1 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7. 0 minus 0 0.2 is minus 0 0.2. 0 minus 0 0.3 is minus 0 0.3. And 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So this matrix here is the identity matrix minus the R matrix. So now we want to take the inverse of that. So if we take the inverse of I, R like that, that is equal to 1 over, oh, I forgot my inverse symbol right there. So the inverse of that, that would be 1 over the determinant, and I will show you just a moment what that is, times the matrix with these two elements switched around and the negative sign of two, those two elements right there. All right, so the, the determinant of this matrix, if this is the matrix, the determinant is equal to the product of these two minus the product of those two. So it would be 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 minus a negative 0 0.2 times a negative 0 0.3. So it's these two elements multiplied together minus those two elements multiplied together. So this is equal to 0 0.35 minus 0 0.06, which is equal to 0 0.29. All right, that's a determinant. So that means that the inverse of I minus R is going to be 1 over 20, uh, oh, not 29, but 0 0.29, 0 0.29 times the I minus R matrix with those two elements reversed, so we put the 0 0.5 there and the 0 0.7 there, and then we change the sign of those two, we leave them in place, so 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. So this here is the inverse of I minus R. If you're not familiar with finding the inverse, I have some videos in the algebra section that show you how to find inverses in various ways. So this is one of the ways in which we can do it if it's a two by two. There's other methods as well for three by three and larger matrices. So what this means is that this is equal to the matrix 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.29, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.29, 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.29, and 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.29. Now, it's probably better to leave it like this. It's easier to work with it than it, to make it look like that, but just so you can see that this is the same as this over here. Now, the next thing we need to do is multiply the S matrix times I minus R and the inverse of that. So now we're going to take S times I minus R inverse. So this is equal to the S matrix, is of course the one up here. So that would be 0 0.4 times 0 0.3. Okay, I can see now, of course, where I haven't yet shown you where the I, S, and R come from. So let me show you that the P matrix here is equal to the I up here, the 0 down here, the S up here, and the R down here. 
like so. I don't think I did that anywhere, did I? So just to make sure, remember that the S matrix is these two elements up here and the R matrix is these four elements down here. Okay, so now we're going to multiply the S matrix times this matrix right here, which is 1 over 0 0.29 times... 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.7. Okay, so we can take the 1 over 0 0.29 on the outside and just multiply this times this and see what we get. So that's 1 over 0 0.29 times. Okay, so what we're going to end up with now is we're going to end up with a matrix with just two elements because we're multiplying a 2 by 1 times a 2 by 2 that gives us a 2, that gives us a two by 1. All right, so we're going to multiply these two elements by this column right here. So we get 0 0.4 times 0 0.5 times plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. So let's get a calculator for that. So to get the first element, we're going to multiply these two times these two right here. So it's going to be 0 0.4 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 equals. And so this multiplied times this, we get 0 0.29. And to get the second element right here, we're going to multiply these two elements times those two elements. So 0 0.4 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.7. So that's 0 0.4 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 equals. And again, we get 0 0.29. So now when we multiply 1 over 0 0.29 times this and 1 over 0 0.29 times this, we will get a matrix that gives us 1 and 1. And of course, that is this portion right here, the S matrix multiplied by the inverse of I minus R. And notice that that goes up in the upper right corner. So that means that the stable P matrix, the transition matrix, is going to be the identity matrix of 1. The zeros down here, zeros down here, so 0, 0, 0, 0, because that gives us this region of the matrix right there. So it gives us this, this, and this. And up here, we write the result, 1 and 1. And notice we get exactly what we're expecting to find. We're expecting to find this. And notice going through this process, indeed, we did find that. Now you may say, why in the world would we do all this work if we already know what we're going to end up with? Well, you don't always know that you're going to end up with that because sometimes you think you have a what we call a, an absorbing Markov chain, but you may not have one. And when you go through this process and you don't get that result, then you realize you don't have one. And sometimes you don't have a single um, state that goes that gets all of the uh, population. Sometimes the population is divided over two or three states where all the other ones do not get anything. And then you have to be able to find this matrix, which is not going to be one and one, but there's going to be another set of numbers there. And I'll have to show you some examples of how to do that. And that will, of course, come in the next videos. But again, the process is you get your transition matrix, you divide into the columns and realize that this is the I, the S, the zero, and the R matrix. You then realize that the stable matrix will be the I, zero, zero, and up the upper right corner will be S times I minus R to, and the inverse of that. So you first get your I minus R, you then take the inverse of that, then you multiply times S, and then that result goes in the upper right corner, and of course, if they're all ones, then you know you have an absorbing Markov chain. And that's how we do that.